the lagger during the, those depressing times will be in the forefront this time as we continually reopen. And please do know this is something also that would be very good even for tourism. This is something that would be very good even for the airline industry. More mobility also means the demand for gasoline again would be uh, massively bigger. But please do note it does not mean that all of a sudden the airline companies would massively get this large amount of earnings right away. Because of the restrictions, they've been massively hit as well. And because of that also, I, I think it will take a large amount of time and a surge of people starting also to travel more for that part of the economy or that segment of the economy to actually do better. So. Hey guys, so as you all know, over the past few days, the IATF made a declaration that Metro Manila will be downgraded to Alert Level 2, which opens up a world of opportunity for the entire economy, which allows a lot of the establishments like restaurants, fitness centers to open at 50% capacity, which allows conferences, meetings, a lot of events where people would congregate together to actually happen and to have 50% capacity. And we'd actually see also for the first time even arcades start to open. So I, I got to see that over the weekend. A lot of people were playing arcades, something that I have not seen over the past 18 plus months here in the country as well. Please do note that it does not mean that the restrictions are lesser, that the illness is already gone. There's just a lot of parameters like hospital beds, etc. that have been lighter as compared to where we were you know, at the height of this March 2021 and even the second lockdown a couple of months ago. So that being said, I want to answer what should we do as investors in light of this news and I want to answer it from a sentiment perspective, uh, how it works for the economy and also in the stock market. From a sentiment standpoint, of course, we all want this to happen. We all want somehow have a shot to be close to where we were in 2019. Life as we knew it before all of this started to happen. So this brings us closer back and the fact that we are seeing cinemas open again somehow no, a very very good sign in a way that a lot of people are trying to live with this, trying to deal with this in a way that it won't go away soon but because a large part of the population at least for Metro Manila has received their shot. 88% in Metro Manila has been fully dosed. So it's something that's very, very good, which will bring somehow confidence for people to start to go back. So from a sentiment standpoint, I think this is something that's very good, especially that we get to see kids start to go out. Please do note that over this stretch period of time, kids were not allowed to go in malls. Kids were not even allowed to uh, experience dine in. And that alone is something that will give a sense of normalcy to a lot of Filipinos. Um, the removal of those restrictions is something that's very good, which in my opinion will translate into a boost in our economy. Please do remember the ripple effect when people go to cinemas. They don't just buy popcorn, they don't just drink, they also eat or they also get dessert and coffee afterwards. So the draw of watching movies in the cinema will somehow have a large ripple effect on the retail market in malls. And when you say malls also, it will have a ripple effect also to the property development companies that actually own those malls. And the multiplier effect of that will just get even bigger. So please do note also that although as of now November 2021, we are at a much better position than April, May, June 2020, we're still not out of the woods. It will still take a longer time for us to bring us back to the path of growth. It will still take a longer time also before the entire economy starts to push forward. And that being said, we've known this over the past few months that if you look at the telco industry, you look at anyone highly connected to e-commerce, to streaming, to blockchain, they have been thriving. But there will be certain portions and segments of the economy who have been laggards and who have been hit that will greatly benefit from this. So from a sentiment standpoint, I, I think that this is something very good. From an economic standpoint, the more we reopen, the better it will be for us. But I just want to note that this has to be cautioned. Also, people still need to be careful. People still need to protect themselves because if people are not careful, we might end up similar to what happened last year where October, November, December 2020, we were opening up. But because people were careless, we saw a spike January, February, March 
this year. So what we want is the economy to reopen and it flourishes, but as it reopens and as it flourishes, that it's something that's sustainable, that we won't go back to a lockdown next year. That's what we don't want. We cannot afford tightening things up again. And I do hope that more and more people also get those because as they get those, it somehow protects a larger part also of the population as well. From an economic standpoint, this is good. For those of you who love the stock market like me, please do revisit a lot of the things that I said um, at the start of the year. And I mentioned that a couple of things to watch out for is the number of cases, how fast the vaccines get rolled out, and how stringent the lockdowns will be. And from where we are right now, it looks like those things are lining up together. We're seeing cases go down. We're seeing a larger part of the population getting the dose. Metro Manila, 88%. And then lockdown restrictions are easing. So from a stock market standpoint, it's something that gets interesting as well because as what I've mentioned earlier, the companies that have gone up were the ones that were stay-at-home related, were the ones that were technology related, were the ones that were e-commerce related. But there have been a lot of retail related companies that their main businesses were brick and mortar that were hit as well. And the laggard during the, those depressing times will be in the forefront this time as we continually reopen. And please do know this is something also that would be very good even for tourism. This is something that would be very good even for the airline industry. More mobility also means the demand for gasoline again would be uh, massively bigger. But please do note, it does not mean that all of a sudden the airline companies would massively get this large amount of earnings right away. Because of the restrictions, they've been massively hit as well. And because of that also, I, I think it will take a large amount of time and a surge of people starting also to travel more for that part of the economy or that segment of the economy to actually do better. So from a sentiment standpoint, it's good. From an economic standpoint, it's very good. From all of the things that we were looking for to make it healthier and sustainable, whatever upward movement that we have in the stock market, it's also very, very good as well. For those who are asking, what about me? I've invested when it was down. So a couple of things that you can look at is number one, if it's still currently pushing, in an uptrend, you can continually ride that until you see a complete reversal. Or you can actually also do this, you can top slice, meaning take a portion of profits so that you have cash already from the positions that you've made early on. And then pwede mo na siyang itabi so that should there be any corrections, you could use those profits to buy. Or if the same stock starts to drop, you get to stack once again, you get to buy once again. Or in the same way, it could be a play for you also to buy the ones that have been laggards that you think will benefit in this economy. So what I'm saying is this, that it's not wrong also to take some profits. It's not wrong also to shave off some, especially if you have been very prudent in your investing. And it's it's not wrong to do that. If you look at it, a BDO was below 90. It's 130 plus. Jollibee was 240, 250. Last year it was 90, 100, 110, 150. Then moved to 150. So there are some profits also in the table. So that could be your strategy, ride the trend out. If it's continually pushing up, you can continually hold. When it reverses, that could be a signal for you to take profits. But for those who are long-term investors, if the fundamental storyline is there, but you're massively up, you could top slice, use the cash to position again should a correction happen. So this is a bit of good news. Um, for those who are living in the Philippines, this is a bit of good news for those who are purely into uh, the equity markets as well here in the Philippines because somehow no, it gives a shot of earnings back to certain segments of the economy that were not really doing so well over the past few months. And from one person who's living here and investing here, I, I just hope that things get better. But regardless of what we will see in the next few months, the name of the game still is to build your skill deploy expertise on where you want to invest because should this get better or should we still stay at where we are right now you have a plan already so i hope you got this and i hope that this was something that was helpful for all of you this is marvin germo i hope this video helps you trade well trade strong trade smart see you all again soon and god bless you all